guys, so my name is Sebastian. We are here at Superproof 2020, 22 actually. And I'm here uh, with this product, the prototype. Uh, I brought from Tristan and I built that in my living room for uh, uh, adding it to my drum set. So I can trigger additional sound. It senses position and force. And I can have just one big button that changes the sound depending on where I hit. But I can also have like two buttons, like a bongo setup but it changes also the sound depending on where within the field I hit and I can have as many as subdivisions as I like like having three here or four or even more you see it as infinite possibilities can detect also multiple hits at the same time And if you hit, hit very precise, you can have, like also use it for playing a bass line or a xylophone or some other mallets. I'll show it to you maybe with this one here. I also have like a mode where I map, map, map the position continuously to pitch, for example, using it as a tums. Or I can simulate a cymbal with a bell in the middle and a normal cymbal sound and a crash at the side. I can have two cymbals, one on the right and one on the left that sounds different. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, that's absolutely amazing. So how is the technology working? What's going on here? So it there's like just a piece of, of is it felt? Well, that's a material that's basically uh, used for shoes, could also be silicon or rubber. I'm testing that at right now. Um, and it's, uh, it's... It's very sensitive as well. Yeah, so you kind of need to get the right bounce, the right hardness. At the same time, I don't want too much uh, sound radiation from hitting that because I don't want to annoy my family or my neighbors. So. Yeah, we're optimizing that right now. It's a prototype, as I said. Um, the plan is to make it an, into a product in one or two years from now. Uh, we are just uh, founding a company and uh, I'm looking for people who want to co-found and also start developing with me this thing into a product. I'm very impressed. And it seems to automatically, when you change the, uh, the zone parameters, it changed the voicing as well. How is that all done? At the moment, it sends uh, MIDI over USB into a laptop. There's Ableton Live running with some plugins, uh, but you could also like convert it to a CV signal and control some other synthesizers or whatever you like. It's basically the interface that produces the MIDI signal. That is very, very impressive. Thank you. Well, I've got to say, it was uh, Joad Neve who spotted this and he, he said you should definitely go and check this out and uh, I can see why he got so excited by it. <laughs> yeah. it. It's a very sensitive tactile surface as well. So what is the underlying technology behind it? You mean the technology of the sensor below? Exactly, yeah. yeah it's an, basically a sensor that can detect force and it can also detect the position. Uh, and the position um, resolution is quite high. It's actually higher than the LED that I have here. Uh, it's more the restriction on how precise you can actually hit a single note, so, yeah. And again, what's the total number of segments that you can have at the moment? Uh, in the demo, I think it's uh, 20, but it's not restricted. You can actually have as many segments as you like. The plan is to make it completely configurable for the user, having a user interface where he can track and drop uh, like different uh, shapes. Uh, let's say he wants two small buttons and then a big one, assign different MIDI nodes or CC messages to the different buttons, change the lights and so on. So how did this come about? Were you thinking, I need a product to do this and it, and it didn't exist, so we thought, I'll make one? Yeah, exactly. I was uh, playing the drums at home and I wanted to have a digital drum set up and I was not like, satisfied with the products that were available, so I started playing around with uh, different triggers and uh, some of uh, the students at the university where I work, they joined and we played together. And uh, yeah, that's basically how it started. And I now use it in my drum setup at home. And um, yeah, thought maybe it would be nice to have spread it and have some other people using it. 
And um, yeah, therefore I try to find some people who join developing it into a real product now. And I guess you came across this form factor because it's so flexible in terms of the layout. Because if you went for a pad with zones, it would restrict you. Is this you can be continuous on one big pad? For me, it's also very easy to like position and precisely hit left to right, much easier than front to back. But uh, yeah, you're right. I also like the small form factor to have it simple, um, and that you can stack it on top of a standard symbol. Symbol in a drum set, have it as an additional sound, but could also replace some parts of the drum set. Yeah. So do you envisage having maybe a smaller version and a larger version? For now, I think I like the size it has right now. Um, yeah, but it's not a final product yet, so not all the parameters are decided. We'll see what, what happens. And where can people find out more information? Unfortunately, there's no name and no website yet. I just have a oh, newsletter. <laughs> but that's why it was so hard to find you. <laughs> yeah, um, but that will change soon. So we'll uh, come up with a name. And uh, well, I, currently I'm looking for good ideas for a good name for this thing. So what, what's, your working, what's your working title for it? The what working do, do title is uh, Drum Beam. Drum because beam. it's a beam and uh, it's used for drumming. But yeah, we'll see if that stays. Okay, so definitely watch this space. Please keep us posted. This is really interesting. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks to you.